Cell phone, even though it's probably trash. I'm using cell phone now. We ask for our guidance. Oh my God. We ask for our guidance. Why? I don't know. What you would want to do on this program on today, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that your spirit would dwell among us, Lord God, and do, Lord God, a new thing in us, Lord God. This, Lord God, is your house, Lord God. This is your house of worship. This is your house of praise, Lord God. You said that you're searching for those, Lord God, that would worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord God. So, Lord God, I say, Lord God, that you will begin in us on today, Lord God. So I pray, Lord God, without any agendas, Lord God, without anything else, Lord God, take over the program right now, Lord God, and have it on your way, Lord God. Before, Lord God, we sing a song, Lord God. Before we do anything, Lord God, we just want, Lord God, you to know, Lord God, that we can't for all the reasons but to give you honor to give the glory because you're God, because you are not all alone, because you saw fit to allow us to see another day, God, because you saw fit to get us here again, God, we just came to honor you, God, because honor and glory is due to you, Lord, God, so because you saw fit to get us here, Lord, because you saw fit to open up our Lord God, because you saw fit to give us a reasonable portion of our heavenly strength, Lord God, we just came to honor you with our service on today, Lord God. God, we came, Lord God, to give the gifts that you've given us back to you on today, Lord God. So we ask, Lord God, that as we give back to you, Lord God, with singing, Lord God, as we give back to you, Lord God, on the instruments, Lord God, as we give back to you in prayer, Lord God, as we give back to you in worship, Lord God, as we give back to you in the preach word on today, Lord God, that you would honor us with your presence, Lord God, for truly, God, we can't do nothing without you, Lord God. We can't move without you, Lord God. We can't sing without you, Lord God. So, God, have your way in this place place Lord God and we'll be careful to honor you on today Lord God because we love you Lord God and we want your presence Lord God we need you Lord God I pray Lord God that you as we go forward in this service Lord God that you would bless the woman of God that is going to break the bread for us on today Lord God give her everything she needs from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet Lord God I pray Lord God that you would strengthen her Lord God I pray Lord God for those of us that are going to sing on today Lord God I pray Lord God that your will would be done in this service Lord God in Jesus' mighty and great name we pray Lord God amen and amen Lord God hallelujah if you came to give God honor and glory go ahead and give him praise in this place because the word of God said that he inhabits the praises of his people so if you came for no other reason but to give him honor and to give him glory go ahead and give him a place to dwell in this place on today 
because he's worthy hallelujah he's worthy of your glory he's worthy of the honor he's worthy of the praise our god is worthy amen hallelujah hallelujah how many of you got confidence in god amen. confidence that he still heals confidence that he still delivers confidence that he still gives peace confidence that our God is whatever you need him to be hallelujah this song just says that I've got confidence amen I've got so much faith in you Lord I trust your word is true no matter the circumstance my life is in your hands i've got confidence so much confidence in you i've got confidence so much confidence in you your love has been so good to me so God is in your hands. You hold the master plan. I've got confidence, so much confidence in you. I've got confidence, so much confidence in you. Cause your ways are higher. Your thoughts are deeper. I can't even imagine how you do what you do what you do what you do. I've got confidence, so much confidence in you. I've got confidence. Your ways are higher, and your thoughts are deeper. I can't even imagine how you do what you do, what you do, what you do. I've got so much confidence.
we've got confidence in you. unlimited power and one of those things that pastor ended the lesson on with something that he told us a relationship truth because of the power of God we can have confidence and that's what the song was about this man so how many people do we have that's confident in their relationship with God amen 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 good morning abundant love Good morning. Good morning to everyone who is here in the house with us this morning and to those who are streaming with us this morning. We just want to welcome you all to this morning services. Amen. Amen. So y'all know we love to celebrate here at Abundant Love. Amen. Y'all know we like to celebrate. So this morning, guess what? We are celebrating January birthdays. So if you have a birthday in January, please come forward. And also, we haven't left out the lovebirds. If you have a wedding anniversary in the month of January, please come forward at this time. January babies, they coming, they coming, they coming. The parks are a wedding anniversary, amen. We're going to ask Sister Carisha Johnson uh -huh, to come forward at this time. Carisha, that's you. Come forward at this time. And they are still coming. January babies, come on. Amen. At this time, you got to work some magic and say happy birthday and anniversary all in one song. I know you can do it. Have confidence. <laughs> well, happy birthday and wedding anniversary to everyone up here. All right. Happy birthday anniversary to you. Happy birthday and anniversary to you. Happy birthday anniversary to you. Happy birthday, wedding anniversary to you. We love you all. <laughs> Man, I knew you could do it. Amen. And we have a small token for you all. Come back, come back, come back. Just to say happy birthday. That's for you all's wedding anniversary. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. And at this time, we are going to have our morning announcements. Good morning, Abundant, Good morning, Love, Fellowship Abundant Love Fellowship Church. Today is Sunday, Today is January, Sunday the January the 29th, and these are your, weekly, these are your announcements. weekly announcements. To request a copy, to request of, your a copy of your 2022 giving statement, giving statement please, email, please your email your request, request to, to ALF Waco F -I -N, F -I -N, at yahoo.com. New members orientation, New members orientation is, held is held every second, every Sunday, second of month. Sunday of each month. Please see Minister please Adrian, Minister Adrian Halliburton, Halliburton or Sister Elena, or Mason, Sister Elena with Mason, Mason with any questions. questions. Discipleship classes, Discipleship are, held classes every are held every Wednesday evening, Wednesday at, 6 evening at 6 p.m. in person and, in person via, Zoom and via Zoom link. Please contact Please Minister, contact Paula, Minister Paula, Paula Smith for details. Join us each Wednesday, Join us night, each for Wednesday night for prayer at 6.30 p.m. in classroom in number, one. Classroom number one. one. A Zoom link, a is, Zoom available. link is available. For additional information, for additional Please, information, contact, Reverend please Reverend contact Reverend Mary Lynn Hamilton. Wednesday night live Wednesday sessions, night are, live held sessions are held in person and via Facebook Live. Join us each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Youth Bible study, youth is, Bible available study is available to all youth, to ages, all youth ages 3 through 17, through 17 every Wednesday, every at, 7 Wednesday at 7 p.m. Please see Minister Please Candace, see Minister Barker, Candace with Barker with any questions. Our Sunday service, Our Sunday held, service in person, is held in and via Facebook, and via Facebook Live. Live. We welcome you to join we us each Sunday, Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. For, for a powerful from word God. from God. Stay informed, Stay by, informed by following, by following Abundant, Love Abundant Love Fellowship Church, Church on all of our, social, all of our platforms social media platforms to receive up-to-date up information. 
you can sell your you can sell your tithes and offerings via, offering via PayPal by going to by going to www.alfwaco.com and selecting the donate button. The donate button. Or you can mail or checks, you can or, mail money checks or money to orders to P.O. Box 1547, Hewitt, Texas, Hewitt, Texas 76643 or via our or cash, cash app to ALF, ALF offering. offering. And these have been and your, weekly, have been your announcements. weekly announcements. Have a blessed week, have abundant, blessed love. week abundant love. Amen, amen. That was our weekly announcement. Good morning, Abundant Love. At this time, we are going to get prepared for the Ministry of Sewing. So if you need an envelope, please see one of the ushers. Just flag them down. And also remember our ways to give that were also mentioned in the announcements. So as we prepare, we're just going to say a blessing over the uh, over the offering. Father God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, God. We thank you for always being able to trust and have confidence in you, Father God. Now, Lord, at this time, God, we just thank you for the ability to be able to sow into your kingdom, Father God. We just thank you for the ones who are going to give and for the ones that don't have to give, Father God. We ask that you bless them on the next time around that they will be able to give. Father, we thank Thank you, God, and we ask that these funds are going to be used in the edification and the uplifting of your kingdom. In Jesus Christ's name, we all pray. Amen. Maybe this ain't for everybody because you're still waiting on a boo. You're still waiting on a car. But how many of you know that because you got up this morning, you're blessed? How many of you know that when you went in your kitchen and you had food on your table, that meant you're blessed? Hey, God. That, that means that when you went to the closet and you had to pick out something, that means you're blessed. That means you're blessed when your kids are okay. That means you're blessed when your grandkids are okay. That means you're blessed when you got a job. That means you're blessed when God is still taking care of you. Tell your neighbor, pain free don't mean I ain't blessed. All the pain lets me know is I'm still living. Glory be to God. Now I need, I need, I need, listen, listen. I don't need everybody. I don't need everybody because... Because, because I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. I, I, I don't know what's going on, you know. But, 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 but I need, I need about 15 of y'all, real, real grateful folk. I need about 15 real thankful folk. I need about 15 people that will speak prophetically over your own life. Oh, y'all, y'all, 
me. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. I, I, I need about 15 people that regardless of what's going on in your life, regardless of what the devil's trying to do in your life, in your circumstances, in your situations, that you will resist him by speaking prophetically over your life. Y'all ready? Where are the 15 at? Stand on your feet. be to God. Now, let's start by giving God praise. Y'all ready? Don't say nothing.
fellowship. I need you to declare that over this church. Oh, come on, come on. I need, I need some faith walkers in here. Glory be to God. It's gonna work in our favor. It's gonna work in our favor. Hey, it's gonna work in our favor. 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 We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Somebody give him a great praise. Glory be to God. Woo. Hallelujah. You see, we have to understand the Word of God is a prophetic book. Okay. Because it's the Word of God. It's the Logos. But God don't want to stop with the written Word, the Logos. He wants to turn Logos into Rhema. Oh my God. And how you turn Logos into Rhema it's when you believe it because all things are possible to him that believes. And so I don't just believe it and wait, but I believe it and speak. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. I believe it and I speak. Glory be to God. Because the Bible says that he has given us the ability to cause those things that are not as though they are. Glory be to God. And so listen, listen, I know you may not feel like you're blessed this morning. Oh God, y'all forgive my voice, but you may not feel like you're blessed this morning because you got pain in your body. You may not feel like you're blessed this morning because you got some bills due and, and you got and you don't all have all the money, but 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 I know this. I know this that he is the Lord of the harvest. Oh my God, glory be to God. Can I tell you that when Abraham, he did not know that when he went to the uh, Mount Moriah to, to, to be able to sacrifice his son, he did not know before he started climbing up the hill that they were going to come back down. But he spoke. He said, y'all stay with the horses. He said, me and the lad, we're coming back down. What did he do, pastor? He spoke. Okay, glory be to God and when he got there and he was obeying the word of God I, I need everybody that obeys the word of God to just understand glory be to God you got to partner with God you got to open your mouth and you got to speak what God says oh my God I don't know about you but this is my year I'm speaking some stuff I, I, I'm speaking some stuff glory be to God I ain't got it yet but yet means that it's on the way and I'm going to speak it. Glory be to God. The prophetic word of God says it's got to come to pass now. Now, I'm not speaking anything he didn't say. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm not speaking anything he said. But if he said it, I can speak it. Oh, go ahead, tell your neighbor. If he said it, I can speak it. He said I'm healed so I can say I'm healed glory be to God he said I can have peace so I declare my peace he said I will be the head and not the tail so I can declare it glory be to God oh my God oh my God somebody remind me to do teaching on prophetic on the prophetic glory be to God we think it's mystical we think it's it's spooky we we think it's fortune teller but the devil is a lie glory be to god my god is not a fortune teller my god knows the end from the beginning he ain't got to oh my god oh my god i feel god up in here hallelujah listen i really just stood up to just tell y'all that if there's anybody here any member partner now you have to be a member partner of this church amen and you have to have at least 
um, at least five years tenure here. No, I'm sorry, three years tenure, tenure here to uh, serve on the board of the church. And I have some applications, glory be to God, it's just information application, amen, um, that if you, if you would like to serve, first of all, I ask you to prayerfully ask God, is that what he wants you to do? But if the answer from God is yes, I, I please see me after this service. And I will get you one of these applications. Amen. We have a board position um, that we need to replace. And so if God is leading you to be a board member, amen, um, I'm, I'm going to ask you to see me after service. Also, all of the ministers that have signed up, that have registered to attend the faith leadership meeting on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, we need to see you, uh, Sister Michelle Hicks and I, we need to see you in the meeting room immediately after service. Now, those ministers, you know who you are. If you signed up, if you are registered to go, we need to see you briefly in the I don't know what to call that room because we use it for prayer. We use it for finance. Amen. Uh, but just see us behind the curtain. Glory be to God. And uh, we, will, uh, we will get that information to you. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. How many of you are ready to go higher? Amen. Y'all, I, I really hated to even interject an announcement in that. Amen. But listen, but listen. But listen. How many of you know that we have been blessed at this church? Some of y'all still sitting here like, no, this church ain't blessed. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. This church is blessed. Now, notice I didn't say we were perfect. We're blessed. And we're blessed to have one of the best choirs in this city. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And, 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 and that's another thing, if, if, if Minister Chris don't mind me. Uh, saying this um, also be be praying about if God has blessed you to be able to sing be praying about whether he wants you to serve in the choir amen amen and and but we want to expand this year but but listen they are here to minister to you in song Will you do me a favor and stand on your feet and receive the minister, the music ministry of the Abundant Love Fellowship Church in the form of our choir? Amen. <laughs> Things over. 
a excellent praise. If he's excellent, give him an excellent praise. Hallelujah. Mm, yes, you are, God. He's excellent. Woo. Yes, he is. Sing. If you know he's an excellent God, just lean over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, and I want you to say it like this, they ain't lying. <laughs> Glory be to God. Can we give God a great praise for this choir? Hallelujah. Listen, if you are ready for the word of God this morning, God has blessed this house with a young woman that is multi-talented and most of all truly anointed by God. Those of us on Wednesday night, we know she can just read the word. And you can feel the spirit of God just moving through the room. This young lady is married to a powerhouse man of God. And together they form a dynamic duo. Glory be to God. Today, she is coming in the spirit of God to speak to you, to speak to us, the word of God. I don't have to wonder if God has given her a word. I know he's given her a word, and my prayer is that we open our hearts and our minds to receive the word of God. Do me a favor and stand on your feet. And open your mouth and give God a great praise for Minister Evelyn Jordan.
all my life you've been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God good. Amen. What an honor and a privilege it is to be here, to be able to stand in this assignment. First, giving honor to God and to the greatest pastor in this side of heaven. Praise God. Dr. Edward E. Ross, thank you so much for not only what you do for the Jordan family, but for every family that's a member partner in this church. And definitely to my soulmate, Reverend Chester James Jordan. I am so thankful for this man of God. When I was praying for a husband, young ladies, I said, Lord, you know what I need. Don't give me what I want, <laughs> but you know what I need. Somebody that's kind, somebody that's patient, but most of all, somebody that's going to love you. And I know if he loves you, he's going to love me. <laughs> someone who's sensitive, someone literally cares about people and I tell you I wrote it in a book and I had forgotten about it and then on one of our first dates he was looking through that book and saw what I had written to the Lord of what I wanted in a man and God did it he knows what you need and that's what the Lord did someone to encourage you when you're at your worst to comfort you and I'm so thankful and I ask I solicit your prayers for Eddie this morning he's not here he's been having some sleep issues so I just want you to pray for him if he comes across your heart remember him in prayer God is so good and I thank the Lord for my fella yoke ladies, yoke persons in the ministry. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. The ministry team is so awesome. Our deacons, our ushers, other Christian friends, thank you. The Lord has a word. And he said that his word will not return void. And I've just been getting blessed because he's been just encouraging my heart all week, last week. At the beginning of the year, in fact, the 8th of January, celebrating our eighth year of existence, the pastor proclaimed that this was our year of transformation. A change is coming. And when Minister Rhonda, I said, Minister Rhonda, when she was singing, I literally could see some caterpillars getting their wings. Some of you have been crawling, but this year, you're no longer going to be crawling. 
You're going to get some wings. According to our pastor declaration. Amen. And I'm trying to catch a hold of that too, pastor. There are some things that God wants to do in all of us. There's got to be a change. But the change is going to cost. My subject today, coming from Galatians 6 and 9, and I'll read it. And let us not grow weary. And when I looked up that word weary, unwilling to continue. While doing good. While you yielding to the spirit of God. Because the Holy Spirit, without him living on us, we can't do any good. For in due season, when is your time? Not when is somebody else's time, but when is your time? Oh, my God, my God. You're going to reap if you do not lose heart. My subject for this morning is the cost of discipleship. You've heard it before. Salvation is free. But discipleship is going to cost us something. Doing what's right in this fallen world is not easy. In fact, it's getting harder and harder every day. And the Bible says that it's going to get worse. And I don't want to scare you, but it's going to get worse. But God has called us to be in this world, but not of it. We have to understand that we can't walk in the way the world walks and we say we have the Spirit of God in us. We are called to forgive. We are called to have self-control and to do good to all. And I love that 10th verse where it says, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Now, we, now we're supposed to be good to everybody, but especially to our brothers and sisters. There is no sense. And, and I know it happened. It happened in Paul's day. Two women who couldn't get along. And, and even Paul himself got mad at Mark. But there is no reason for us to be in the body and wait 5, 10, 15 years and will not speak. In fact, go on the other side instead of passing by that person. That cannot be. We say we want to go higher in the Lord. We say we want to go a new level. But there are some things that we've got to get control of. We've got to allow the Spirit of God to rule and reign in our lives. If we're saved, if we're baptized believers, we've got to do it the Lord's way. We got to do it what the words say. What does the Bible say? And there's going to be a lot of time when the world is not going to understand you. The world, those who do not believe. And maybe even sometime those baby Christians here are still growing and they're being swayed to and fro. Sometimes they may not understand you when you try to walk the way that the Lord is calling you to walk. A friend of mine gave me a track one time. He says, some may, but you cannot. There are some things as a born, baptized believer, as you begin to walk his way, you're not going to be able to do. Sometimes the world may not understand you, but Jesus says, 
if they hated me, don't get, don't get bent out of shape. If they hate you, just remember they're in Luke 6, 22, 23. They're going to hate you because they first hated me. But bless it. You bless when men hate you and when they exclude you from their gatherings. Oh, yes, they're going to exclude you because sometimes they ain't going to want to talk around you. <laughs> and sometimes you're not going to want to be around that talk, especially when God is dealing with you. You know, I'm a people person and I love people, but there's been some times when I've had to say, go in my office and kind of be by myself. You got to do whatever you got to do to keep your eyes on the Lord because it's easy. It's easy to get off because you're human and you love people. But we've got to get to the place where we love God more. Lord, I love you more. I want to do what you say more than I want friends. I love friends. The Bible says if you want to have friends, you got to show yourself friendly. But you got to be mindful of the friends that you're trying to be friends with. Sometimes the people that God has put in our lives, we don't want to be with them. That's why we're walking around without friends. God has given you some. I'm talking to somebody. But you don't want to be with them. You want to be with them. And God has called you out of that. And you're not going to have any peace. If the Spirit of God is living in you, you're not going to have any peace until you do right. Until you do right by God. I, I was thinking about, and the Lord took me to Nehemiah, the third chapter and the sixth verse, he was on the wall, and I know you know the story. And, and they kept sending him messages for him to come down off that wall. And he sent a message back to them because Jeremiah knew that they meant him no harm. They didn't just want to talk or conversate. He said, why should I come down? I'm doing a good work. I can't come down off this wall. And I just want to share, some of you are doing a, you're doing a good work. You're doing what the Lord is telling you to do. Why are you trying to come get off from doing what God has called you to do, to go do what somebody else is calling you to do, when they don't want nothing? They just want to block you. They just want to keep you from going in the right direction. They don't mean you no harm. They're not doing what God has called them to do, so they're trying to keep you from doing what God has called you to do. See, it will cost. Sometimes you have to say no when you want to say yes. But if it means pleasing God, let my no be no, my yea be yea, my nay be nay. But I'm reminded in 2 Corinthians 4, 17, all the things that we have to go through, whether it's being hated, whether it's being excluded or, or this and that, you know, it's nothing, Paul was encouraging, it's nothing to be compared with what God has in store for us. I just want to tell you to stay on the wall. Don't come down. You're doing a good work. You're pleasing God. Others may not understand it, but you keep doing what God has called you to do. And I love it when it said, you're going to reap your harvest. You're going to reap your harvest in your season. God has something for you. Sometimes we've jumped off the ship too quick. Our blessing was right over the fence. And we, we, we went back before God could give it to us. Don't give up so easy. Let me encourage you that this year, if we don't 
grow weary. If we don't get in this place where we're unwilling to continue, that's a scary place, especially in the things of God. While doing good, you doing good. Girl, we have to encourage each other. Paul was encouraging the people. He was encouraging the Galatians. The apostle Paul was. And, and he was encouraging the believers here in Galatia. Now, this was not just one town, but a region in Asia Minor, which included many towns. So he was writing this letter to a lot of people, warning them of the things they should av avoid, just like he's warning us today. If your brother be overtaken in a false, ye who are spiritual... Go to him with meekness and kindness. But you better consider yourself. Because if you think you high-minded and you want to pull them down, letting them know all the things they are doing, you better be careful. That's why you got to go in meekness and kindness, lest you be tempted of that same thing. And he was telling them things like, bear your burdens, brother. bear one another's burdens. Amen. And things like, you've been taught. Why are you trying to go back and listen to another word? If we're not listening to what pastor is feeding us on Sundays and Wednesdays and all other days <laughs> in times, if you listen to somebody else that's steering you away from God, and this is what had happened here. And with the Galatian people, they started being bombarded with a lot of different things. People, the, the Judaizers, was trying to get them to go back and rather looking at our faith in Christ, trying to go back telling you got to be circumcised. I know the men don't like that. But anyway, you got to be circumcised. But, you know, instead of a faith in Christ, no, 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 no. You, you don't. And he was telling them a lot of things. Just like today. It's a little bit different, but it's the same. The enemy is still out to steal, kill, and destroy. And Paul knew that these people had a, was feeling over, a little overwhelmed. Because the responsibilities of, of being a Christian is not easy. It's not easy. In some areas, it's, it's kind of popular. In some, uh, 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 some respect, people think being a Christian, you right now in some areas compared to some countries, it may be popular. But there are literally people being killed for their faith. You say you're a Christian, you're going to prison. You say you're a Christian, off with your head. And I thought, wow, Paul was beaten and, and, and literally ended up losing his head. But he said he counted all of that. Everything he had to go through. And so we've got to get to the place well, Lord, if I'm going to stand for you, I got to be ready. When you're really standing for the Lord, guys, it is a cost. And, and, and don't think it's strange when all this stuff, as James talked about, start coming against you. Don't, it's going to happen. You start living, you make up in your mind that you're really going to start living for the Lord. And you're going to see all is going to break loose. All H is going to break loose. So Paul was here encouraging them and he was reminding them as as he as the lord is reminding us now that there is a harvest coming we are gonna reap if we're reaping to the spirit of god there is a harvest if you are reaping love i just want to read it here galatians 5 and 22 because but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. But the fruit, it didn't say fruits, 
It says fruit. God, if we're not, if the Spirit of God is living in us, this stuff should be seen in our lives as the body of Christ. If you're sowing to the Spirit, you're going to reap of the Spirit, which is life everlasting. Isn't that good? Isn't that good news? Amen. Amen. Because I dare you to love somebody and truly love them. You may not see it right then, but it's going to come back because there's going to be a time when you're going to need to be loved. Long-suffering. The Lord reminds me this with my baby all the time. Gentleness, kindness, I tell you, your kids will teach you better than anybody. You say you have the Holy Spirit? Well, they'll see. They'll make it come out. <laughs> you say you're walking with God? They'll make it. Oh, is that really the truth? So that when we're sowing the fruit, you know, it, Galatians 5.22, which I just read, that's going to bring about life everlasting. Whereas Galatians 5.19.21 tells us of the seeds that produce the works of the flesh. And I just want to read it. You, you see, it's just so many, so much more of them than it is. It is just... There is evidence, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelations, and so on and so on. But when we sow to the flesh, we will reap corruption. As sure as the sunrise, these seeds will bear fruit at harvest time. Whether you've sown to the spirit or to the flesh, what fruit they produce is determined by the kind of seeds that you planted. And so we just want to, so we just need to watch and pray because I know the spirit is willing but sometime, according to Mark 38, the flesh, the flesh gets weak. So we need to, there are some things that I just want to talk briefly on that we need to do that the Lord showed me. And he showed me because I needed it. I needed to remember to do this. Evelyn, in order for you to, we, we got to put on the whole armor every day. Because that means, because we, so we can stand against the wiles, W-I-L-E-S, and the wiles of the devil. You know, the devil is constantly scheming, and, and, and we're no match for it. He's constantly trying to bring up things uh, so that he can get us off course. And, and, you know, if he can get us looking at each other, that takes our eyes off of him and what he's about. You know, the Bible tells us that we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. If your enemy has a driving license or a social security number, you are fighting against the wrong devil. You're fighting against the wrong person. But I know it's sometimes easy because you, you, you see that person and maybe they've uh, hurt you, and, and, but you forget to see behind who's really the corporate and that's the devil he don't care who he uses he don't care how old you are how young you are how pretty how ugly if he can get you off track that's what his that's his assignment that's his assignment and we got to remember and the lord reminds me evelyn you got to remember you're not wrestling against flesh and blood but against spiritual wickedness in high places. And one of the things, so you got to put on this armor and, and, you, and you got to pray. You got to get in his presence. 
You got to be in that word because we got to know what the word is telling us to do. We got to get in the word. We got to pray. We got to get in his presence. And the Lord told me, and a lot of people have told me this, you got to get some rest. I know it's, it may seem like a simple thing, but sometimes you can't be in everything. Especially, I put it like this, if God has given you an assignment, he'll give you the strength to complete whatever assignment he's given you. But sometimes, I know when I was younger, I'd get into a lot of things that I, don't, I know God didn't call me to do. But I saw a need, and I thought I could take care of it. Until one day, I was on to see at a funeral, and God says, no more. I ended up not seeing it. My husband was supposed to preach. We were in the hospital. Yeah. Trying to take on too much. And the word of God says, we need a physical rest. But in, in uh, uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, he says, come unto me all who are weary. Yeah. All of you that are on the verge of not wanting to continue. Sometimes we want to go to everybody else. That, but we need to go to the Lord first. Okay? Our pastor have a lot on his shoulder. We need to go to God. And so he said, all of you who are on the verge of, of, of not continuing, and he said, and Vernon, he said, I will give you rest. I thank the Lord for our minister of music, Minister Chris, the best in the land. Thank you so much. He's shy. Uh, but he tell us, he be preaching to us, I'm telling you. That we got to be, he's, he always uses this word, intentional. Regarding our songs, our notes, or whatever. But we got to be intentional with our walk. Regardless of how we feel. Sometimes we're kicking and screaming. Lord, I don't want to do this. But we've got to make it up in our mind. Aren't you glad that Jesus was intentional, dying for you and for me. He didn't have to, never, God, is there another way? But nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. See, we got to have a nevertheless spirit in us. Nevertheless, what's going on? Nevertheless, God, I don't want to do this. But because you said it, because this is my assignment. Pastor, I almost called you two times last week. But nevertheless, how I'm feeling, what's going on, seems like I can't get things right. I'm going to do what you call me to do. And I just want to encourage all of us. Because one day... We're going to see Jesus. He's not worried about titles. But did you complete the assignment that I gave you? Everybody have something, some kind of assignment that God has given you. You can't say, well, God, I don't. It'd be like that. Oh, my God. That person that was trying to tell that to Jesus. Mm -mm. I'm going to take what I gave you and I'm going to give it to somebody else. I'm going to give it to one that already had two. I'm going to take that one because you, you decided that you was going to bury what God gave you. You decided that you didn't think it sounded like anybody else. You decided that nobody else would like it. You decided. But let me tell you, we're going to give an account. We've got to stand before the Lord and give an account. 
of everything. I was reading that in Ecclesiastes 12.14. Ecclesiastes I'd never seen it. But every, 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 every secret thing, we're going to have to give an account. Every good or bad thing, we're going to have to give an account. So thank you, Minister Chris, when he says we got to be intentional with our walk, regardless of how we feel, regardless of whether nobody likes us or not. That is beside the point. Sometimes people are not even thinking about you, and you think they don't like you. The devil will fool you that way, too. You think people are all mad at you. You think... Nobody likes you. You think the people, they're in their own zone. We just got to get in the, where God is. I used to teach a class called Experiencing God. And in that book, it said, Lord, wherever you are, that's where I want to be. I want to experience you wherever you are. So it's not about what others are doing. What is God doing in your life? If so those are the, if, and, and these are the three things that the Lord, you know, had, had given me as it, as it relates to not being weary, as it relates to there being a cost to walk this life. We got to put on the armor. We got to remember that and, and know who we fighting because it's not flesh and blood. We got to get us some rest, physical rest and rest in the Lord. Amen. Get in his feet. Amen. And we got to get some word in us. And we, and we you know, and, and, and I know sometimes uh, you have to fight. But we have to fight and, and you know, and pray sometime when pastor is preaching because the devil don't want us to hear that word. You have to fight sleep. Whatever you got to fight, you go ahead and fight it. I believe God. Lord, I choose to believe you. As the ministers come, if you don't remember anything, remember the whole armor. Put it on the whole armor. Get some rest and be intentional with our walk. As Christian believers, as we're going higher in this year of transformation, discipleship, there will be a cost. Salvation is free. But to walk this life, to walk out this life, when others won't like you, it's not a popularity contest. It's not popular. But how many of you know, when it comes to the things of God, oh my God, it's worth it. And you will never find a better place to be been in the place of God. God loves us. The ministers are here. But before I say anything else, I forgot to acknowledge those of you who are watching. And just in case there's someone who's not saved and, and not really understand, uh, you know, about the seed sowing, uh, because we know that regardless of the seeds we've sown, we'll see them together and I, I see them again. And I just want to say this uh, before I do this other part. A friend of mine, she's going to be with the Lord. But I used to be with her, and I would hear her say in her prayers, crop failure, crop failure. And I was like, what are you saying? She said, girl, I know there's some stuff. There's been some seeds that I've planted that wasn't like God. And I'm praying that God will kill that seed. I'm praying that God won't allow that harvest to come up. And we can do that. But for those of you out in the airways, uh, Facebook area, however you're watching this program, if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, 
you can pray. This is a prayer that you can pray. 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, Jesus is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And I love Psalms 103. When you do that, he said, as far as the east is from the west, he'll remember your sins no more. He won't remember all them bad seeds that you planted. And someone, and I was asking someone, well, what do you do if, you, if you're saved and, and you planted some bad seeds? You pray. The first one, you pray because he said he's just and faithful. He will forgive you. The first one that I was saying for the lost should be Romans 9, 10. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died, but he was raised. God raised him from the dead. Romans 9 and 10. I want you to write that down. If you believe that, that second one is true. As far as the east is from the west, he'll remember your sins no more. Is there anyone? But if you hear and you know you've planted some wrong seeds, this is the one where, I, where you pray. If you just confess it, Jesus is faithful. He'll forgive you. He'll cleanse you. You don't have to walk around being a child of God, having all this stuff that you put out. Yes, it may come up. Those seeds may grow up to be a harvest, but don't you worry. You trust God. And you just begin, after you've already confessed your sins, you just begin to sow some good seeds. Just begin to shook. Sow some love what you've been hating all the time. Show some forgiveness. Sow some long suffering where you've been impatient. See, you can, be, you can sow some good seeds. You don't have to worry about the bad ones that you, you had. Yeah, you may have to deal with them. You may see them. They may stare you in the face. Lord, I sowed this. But his grace is sufficient for you. You don't have to endure this all by yourself. He said, come to me. Come to me. You need some rest. You're worrying about too much. You can't do anything about that, but I can. I'll forgive you for it. And then I'll give you the grace to endure whatever you have to endure. Don't be afraid. He's waiting. He's waiting for you. My God, my God. He loves you this morning. He loves you more than words could ever say. Thank you, Lord. God, we love you. Lord, we just want to be close to you. Lord, we just want to do what you've called us to do. Just to be close to you. That's my desire. Thank you, God, for your power and your might. Just to be close Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you for filling us with your Holy you. Spirit. Hallelujah. So that we can do the things you've called us to do. To God, we thank you. God, we love you. That's my thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just to be close God, we just want you close to us. Hallelujah. 
just to be close to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just to be close to you. Thank you, God. That's my desire. Thank you, God. Just to be close to you. Just to be The last call is for for those of you who are looking for a church home. I can truly say that our pastor gives us a word at this church at Abundant Love Fellowship. If you are in need of a church home, I encourage you to consider this place. It is good ground. The word goes forth in power and in might, not just on Sundays, but on Wednesdays, hallelujah, and any other time that you need it, it comes forth, because there are other ministers that also bring forth, so this is good ground, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, thank you Lord, just to be Father, I thank you for your word. Father, you said your word would not return, return in your void. So I thank you, Lord, that your word is going to accomplish what it meant to accomplish. It's going to encourage. Hallelujah. God, we thank you that it's not going to return void. And I thank you, God, that as we go out to serve, thank you for the worship experience. But as we go out to serve, we ask, God, that you would be with us, that we would help us to put on the whole armor. It's easy to have it on inside this building, but we need it out there. And I forgot to mention Lord, help us to put on the helmet of salvation. Help us to gird our loins with truth and help us to put on the breastplate of righteousness because even in ourselves we're filthy red. Help us to put on the gospel of peace, our shoes frauded with the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit, hallelujah, which is the word of God, and the shield of faith that's going to clench all those evil thoughts that's gonna I, I'm not saying they might but I know they're gonna try to come against your people have your way have you, help us to be doers of your word and not hearers only help us to yield ourselves to your spirit and not to the flesh but if we do God I thank you that we can go to you we can run to you and ask for forgiveness and begin to sow those good seeds. God, we love you and we praise you. This our prayer we pray in Jesus' name. And let the saints of God 
Say amen.